Let us pray. Lord Jesus, we thank you for the body of Christ. And we thank you, Lord God, for each and every member of the body of Christ. Now, as we gather together to listen to the homily, speak to every single member, we pray, by your grace and Holy Spirit. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, we pray. Amen. The more I've thought about this homily, the more I realize how important this homily is. And because we take the word of the Lord so seriously from the pulpit, I pray that all of us would have ears to hear, because this is important. In a couple of weeks, we will have our annual meeting, annual parish meeting which we are working on very hard to prepare. We'll have several speakers. We'll have the budget. We'll have a celebration together for those of you that would like to attend in Woodsby Hall after the 1050 service. We'll have a celebration of what God did in 2018. And honestly speaking, and of course, I, it's hard to be objective, but uh, looking at the numbers and looking at what God did, just sheer numbers, the Lord did an amazing work in our midst uh, this past year's, and I cannot wait for the 10th to celebrate that and to give thanks to God for that. And the way that happens is the strength of the body of Christ. This is why this homily is so important from 1 Corinthians chapter 12. Paul tells us what a strong church should look like and what a weak church looks like. And I've been around a lot of weak churches and a lot of ones that were not doing what God said and so, of course, I want to concentrate on us and our strength in the body of Christ. Here we go. For as the body is one and has many members, and you are the members, God, by his grace and mercy, has called you to be here. Reverend Kathy and I take very seriously the new members of the church. We spend a lot of time uh, calling them, praying for them, encouraging them. We've even got a ministry that we're offering to them uh, in February, that's very important, on Monday nights from 6.30 to 8. So if you are one of those people that are thinking about All Saints or want to know more about All Saints or have joined recently and want to know more about the church, please mark that on your calendar. We are members of one body. We are one body, so also is Christ. By one spirit, we were baptized into one body. So the power of the Lord, the power of the Holy Spirit comes upon us individually and then brings us together in one body. Now that one body is called All Saints Episcopal Church. This is the body that you have been presently called to. I've been in many churches in my life. The current one that I am serving and leading and uh, deeply honored and privileged to be a part of is this one. In fact, the body is not one member, but many. And so he, then he launches... If the foot should say, well, I'm not a hand, I'm not in the body, is therefore not of the body, the ear, the eye. And so what he's saying is that every single person in this church this morning is very, very important. I cannot impress upon you with stronger language your importance. I cannot express to you, as strongly as I can put it, your value, both in a negative way and in a positive way. In a positive way, if you do what God says, and what I'm speaking of there, uh, as I shared er uh, earlier, is if you are devoted to the Lord and, and listen to the Lord and have your devotions and you're following Jesus as your Lord and Savior, you are worshiping regularly and consistently, and then secondly, you are giving to the Lord, you are a faithful steward, you're giving your tithe. Don't mind saying that. That's not popular to say nowadays, but I'm going to keep saying it because it's in the Bible. You're giving 10% of your money to the Lord to support the church. And then thirdly, you are serving the church, as Paul tells us in 1 Corinthians 12. You are serving the church because you've been called to the church. You and I are not called to the church to sit in a pew and then go home. We are not called to do that. There's nowhere in the Bible that supports that. What we are called to do is we are called by God into the body of Christ. We are not called to stay home. There's no such thing as isolationist, stay-at-home Christianity. It's practiced by millions of people, but I do not believe it's from the Lord. We are called to serve the body. We are called to give to the body. We are called to use our resources for the body of Christ. Why? For our edification? No. For the leader's edification? No. 
so we can have a big budget? No, for the glory of God, for the praise of God, for the honor of God, for God's will to be done among us. And what does that require? That requires an, a, num a large number of people doing what God has called them to do to come together on a regular basis and use their gifts and talents that God has given them and their money, which God has given them, and their resources, which God has given them. It all comes from God. But they're not using those things for themselves. They're using them for the glory of God. They're not isolated. They're not staying at home. They're not doing their own thing. They're not doing whatever they want to do. They have committed themselves to the Lord and to the body of Christ. Now, the Holy Spirit has to show you in the deepest part of your being what I'm saying is true. I can't do that. All I can do is say what is true. But the Holy Spirit has to take that truth and sink it deeply so that you're fully committed to that. You're not committed to me. You're not even committed to all saints. You're committed to the Lord. You're committed to Jesus. He, in the end, is who you have to stand before and give an account of your life. So is anyone more important than the other? No. Is anyone more significant than the other? No. The lectors are just as important as the choir, is just as important as the acolytes, just as important as the acolyte parents, just as important as the stewards, just as important as fill in the blank. Every single person in this church is equally important. And if they were all one member, what would the body be? But there are many members, one body. Okay? The eye can't say, I have no need of you. The eye can't say, I don't have any need of you. The head can't say, I have no need of you. Every person's important. Every person has value. Every person, when coming together under the leadership of the Holy Spirit, comes together as one under the unity of Jesus Christ, it is an incredibly powerful thing. And your responsibility to do that is tremendous. You are not an individual that just walked off the street, decided to pop yourself in the pew and then left, and then nobody knows or cares who you are and you have no significance. That's completely anti-biblical. What is biblical is you've been called by God to be here. You've been called by God to give of your possessions. You've been called by God to give of your resources and talents. You've been called by God to serve. You've been called by God to listen to the Holy Spirit tell you what he wants you to do in this body. Now, it's incredibly easy to do something else. It's incredibly easy to do whatever you want to do. It's incredibly easy to make decisions yourself and to do whatever you want. And I don't have to do this and I don't have to do that. It's much more difficult to listen to what the Holy Spirit is telling you to do. Now, what I hope will happen, Reverend Kathy and I will be sharing at the annual meeting, what I am praying will happen is the Holy Spirit is going to tell us what he wants us to share with you on February the 10th. You don't need to hear what Kathy Hewlin and Reed Hensling have to say. You need to hear what the Holy Spirit has to say through us to the body of Christ. That's my prayer. And we rejoice in that and we call the church body together under Christ to do what he tells us to do. That there be no schism in the body, but that the members should have same care for one another. Boy, that's important. There's nothing worse than a church with schism. There's nothing worse than people pulling against one another. There's nothing worse than gossip and hostility and brokenness and backbiting and all those horrible things that Paul talks about in his letters. Why? Because they're very real. We have the tendencies to do that. It's much more difficult to love, forgive, care for, be compassionate, be kind, be humble, be submissive. But by the grace and mercy of God who calls us into this one body, he can do those things in and through us. And it's much more powerful. It's obvious that we're tired of dissension and hate and mean talk, prejudice and separation and hostility and anger and mean talk and mean actions. But God gives us a place where there's joy, there's peace, there's forgiveness, there's hope, there's love, there's compassion, there's kindness. I use that word kindness a lot. And so my prayer for all saints is not only Will you listen to the Lord and do what the Holy Spirit tells you in terms of service to the body of Christ? But that you will be a person of peace. 
You will be a person of bringing people together. You will be a person that cares for the person on your pew and the person behind you and ahead of you and around you, that you will care for not only in your ministry to the Lord, but all those that you serve and all the members of the body of Christ. It is an impossible thing to do without the Holy Spirit leading us. That's why I keep appealing to the Holy Spirit, and of course Paul does in 1 Corinthians 12 and 14. Now, you all are the body of Christ and members individually. And then he appoints, God appoints all these leaders. And each one of those leaders, I'm going through, there's about 30 groups of people that I lead at this church. The, each one of those persons is very important. And when they don't do what they are supposed to do, it hurts the church. No doubt about it. And when they do what the Holy Spirit tells them to do, it helps the church immeasurably. No doubt about it. Now, I can't tell you what the Lord is saying to you, but I can say this 100% fact. The Lord is speaking to you for sure. Now, what he's telling you, I don't know what that is. My prayer in closing is that you would listen to what God says for you to do and that you, by the grace of God, would do what the Holy Spirit tells you. Because when you do, if you do and when you do, and I pray that you do, we are all going to be blessed. I am directly affected by every single person in this church. I know that's a little hard to believe, but it's absolutely true. Every single person has an effect on me in some way or manner or means. So let's pray for the body of Christ, one of the most important theological truths of the gospel. Lord Jesus, thank you for raising up this faithful group of people. Thank you for the leadership in the church. Thank you for all the wonderful volunteers. Thank you for all the staff and the part-time staff and the full-time staff and all the people that make this place happen. Thank you for the new members that you bring and all the gifts and the talents that you abundantly pour out and the ways that we give of our means to support the church. Continue to bless this body of Christ and lead us in a way that brings Jesus glory and honor and praise. Please encourage all of us to be faithful to the calling that God has granted each and every one of us. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, we pray. Amen. Please stand.